So I'm working on this robot theme clock for my grandson. I just threw one together here to uh, see how it might turn out and decided to change the scale to go to a larger uh, robot. But um, you can see this one's actually working and it's kind of interesting how, they, how, what the, how the design is. It just uses the hour movement, not the minute or the second. And it just has one continuous disc that rotates and indicates the time. So you can see right now it's a little past 2.30. And that's what time it is. And so on the back here, the back pops out and you can see there's the meter movement. And I've actually, these wires are for a, a backlit LED. But um, what I'm planning to do, I'm, I'm gonna make it a larger scale. So I'm printing it um, in a 1.8 scale. These are the movements that, uh, that I use. I actually had that one, but I've ordered some more. And uh, these are about $9 a piece. I buy them from this company here called Clockit. And later I'll zoom in on this if you want to read about it. But these are silent movements and they're quartz. They run on um, one AA battery. And you can get uh, movements that are like have built-in receivers or they're, they also have built-in um, daylight savings time controls where they automatically advance or retard with the timing, but uh, those seem to always be sort of problematic. I've, over the years, I've used them for quite a few years and they always just seem to have a problem. So I've decided not to mess with them now for this clock. But when you buy the movement here, it comes with this little bag of hardware, the attachment mounting hardware. And it also comes with uh, hands, but I just elected not to, to buy the hands because I'm not planning to use them. So this is the, uh, 3D pendant piece inside, I'll show you on the back here. It's hard to see in this one that's gray, but this is the piece that the clock um, attaches to. And it would go in there like this, and the meter movement then goes in like this with the, uh, the battery at the bottom. And so what you do here is just, uh, I'm gonna use a rubber, um, isolator on this one and then a washer and a nut and you tighten that down and I would also recommend hitting it with uh, just drop uh, CA glue to kind of bond these two parts together because when you're changing the battery uh, it's going to be easy to shift it around even if you do have it torqued down. So this is able to just to slide in and um, adjust to the depth. And this is the part here that you're going to be, that white sleeve, that's the part that the, um, that the hour hand is going to be uh, connected to. And there's these other little uh, hardware pieces that, that won't be used. The nut that uh, attaches to the, the, the minute hand. And then there's this also an open nut here that they include in case you have a, you want to use the second hand movement. So this is what you do. You'd, you'd mount the clock to that and then you slide the, the disc on there. And, but what I'm going to do, I'm making a larger one for my grandson. So I'm going to a 1.8 size scale. It's about as large as I can get into my printer and print the pieces. So it's pretty, pretty good size. I'm also going to backlight it like this one. So on this one, uh, the hole got larger too. I, I thought about trying to um, go in and modify the design, but decided in the end just to um, come up with a spacer or a washer and do it. So I'll go ahead and uh, so I found a washer that fits over the uh, Movement. I'm going to go ahead and use this isolator again and drop this down and found this washer I'm going to use and then drop the nut on there. And I'm also going to do the same thing on this one. I'm going to tack it with some CA cyanoacrylate adhesive. Um, just so it won't slip around because you can see if you're trying to pry this uh, battery out, you can actually turn it around. 
And this is the dial you'd use to set the time once you get it going. Same as this, this is a slightly different design, but they're all kind of the same. So I've got the, uh, this is the regular size version. I just wanted, wanted to go ahead and make one first just to see how it would turn out. And that's when I decided to go ahead and build a larger one. It'll be easier to paint the details and just easier to see the time. So it's for fully articulating and um, it might be cool to add some actual robotics or servos in there. This one might, might be hard to fit all that into, but the larger scale one, uh, you probably could do something like that. So I'm going to zoom in on this in case you want to read about it. But the company's clock it. They sell all sorts of clock kits um, or movements. But um, I just downloaded the uh, 3D design and printed it myself. You won't be able to find this kit at clock it, but you can find the movements there to, to, to put it together. So good luck with your project. And... Um, You'll probably find you can put these uh, clock movements in just about anything and turn it into a clock. I've seen all sorts of things become clocks. But uh, I really like the design of this robot. It's, I think it's pretty interesting and cool. And I think my grandson is really going to enjoy having it. Thanks for watching.